Thank, thank you. Okay. So uh, thank you uh, everybody for uh, accepting our invitation uh, and uh, coming to the session. Like so, um, today uh, I will be uh, presenting on physics pedagogy course, the art of physics teaching for uh, student educators. So uh, this is the seventh uh, talk in this series of innovative teaching and scholarship of teaching and learning. So um, uh, let me quickly tell you a story about the title. Uh, so I have been uh, teaching physics pedagogy course at WPI in uh, physics department since 2018. So this is particularly for graduate teaching assistants and undergraduate peer learning assistants. So what happened is I sent an email to the students, um, uh, to the teaching assistants and peer learning assistants that, uh, okay, that, uh, um, uh, okay, probably, uh, do I need to, I need to find my pen for annotation. So let me find my pen because some, there is a, an, a request for annotation. I, I'm just finding my pen. I think you have your pen on the right side. Uh, uh, I want to use this. I mean, yeah, that is that, but so probably my, let me try this pen. Okay, this looks good. Let me use different color, just a second. Uh, how do I choose color? Okay, so maybe blue color is good. Uh, did I choose correctly? Just a second. This is blue. Uh, it's not working. I think that's the pen. Pen tool. Pen tool. Oh yeah, good. So um, I sent an email uh, to the teaching assistants and peer learning assistants saying that I am offering pedagogy course. So, and I gave the time, so this is the time uh, in this spot, uh, please join. And uh, maybe one or two student, one, uh, one or two uh, teaching assistants and peer, le peer learning assistants came. But most of them did not come. And uh, I was surprised and I asked my department head, like, so I sent email to everybody, like there were about uh, 20, uh, about 25 uh, teaching assist, uh, I mean, peer learning assistants, undergraduate students who were scheduled to teach the courses, and about 10 uh, graduate teaching assistants. Uh, and only maybe less than five people attended on the first class. And uh, by the way, what is happening here? My, I see my uh, screen. Uh, scribbles on my screen. So is this from me or something is happening here? Okay, so uh, anyway, so um, and uh, I met my department head. Uh, so only like less than five people attended the class. What do I do? And somebody uh, went to the department head and said that what is this pedagogy thing? Right, and so he suggested that like probably you choose a different title so that uh, people know what this is, and that's why I uh, chose, uh, I put this title, The Art of Physics Teaching, when I sent another email, like from the next class, the class was full, right? So uh, that, that's why I have uh, uh, written the, this title as Physics Pedagogy Course, in parenthesis, The Art of Physics Teaching for, uh, for uh, student educators, okay? So let me go to the next slide. Uh, how do I make the transition? Like so, maybe here. Interesting. Okay. So there is uh, there is uh, some kind of scribbles on my screen. I don't know how to clean this. It is probably. Okay. Yep. I think that works there. Just a second. So. Uh, 
so this is the uh, flyer right so uh, on of the program of today so let me go to the next slide mm. yep so who will benefit from these meetings like so uh, particularly these meetings are for graduate students and postdocs who are interested to make their career as faculty teacher lecturer instructor or professor uh, and uh, or new faculty members so since we are learning all the time so this is kind of uh, like equally um, beneficial to everyone so what we uh, what i am presenting uh, in this uh, talk is what are pedagogical content knowledge and technological pedagogical and content knowledge uh, basically that is about pedagogy and physics pedagogy sample classes uh, and impacts of the classes in physics learning and finally i will show uh, the physics pedagogy course proposal which i have submitted to uh, physics department undergraduate curriculum committee so um, uh, and towards the end uh, i would like to request you for your feedback so uh, uh, so uh, i'll be grateful for your uh, genuine feedback okay with that so some of these uh, material uh, probably uh, you some of you might have already seen uh, that's a kind of repeat so uh, what is pedagogy uh, miriam webster online dictionary defines pedagogy as the art science or profession of teaching a little bit uh, elaborative uh, description is in wikipedia it is the discipline that deals with the theory and practice of teaching and how these influence student learning right? pedagogy informs teacher actions judgments and teaching strategies by taking into consideration the theories of learning understandings of students and their needs and the backgrounds and interests of individual students pedagogy includes how the teacher interacts with the students in the social and in intellectual environment the teacher seeks to establish so that is a kind of detail uh, details on uh, pedagogy uh, even uh, in wikipedia okay so uh, lis sulman was uh, is one of the fam very famous educator so he gave uh, for the first time he gave the principle of this pedagogical content knowledge so uh, uh, what is uh, this this is uh, it, it has two parts one is the content knowledge that means when we go to the classroom what to teach like so, suppose i go to teach uh, introductory physics class let's say newton's laws of motion that is the content right that is the content what to teach uh, on the other hand so even if i know newton's laws of motion uh, if i don't have a skill to deliver properly right how to teach then the class uh, will not be effective the learning will not be effective so uh, pedagogical knowledge uh, is the uh, how to teach so uh, what lee sulman tells uh, in his uh, very famous uh, uh, paper uh, those who understand knowledge growth in teaching this is a very famous paper of 1986 and has more than 35,000 uh, citations as of this morning. So uh, uh, a good uh, effective learning will happen uh, only when we are in the intersection uh, of these uh, pedagogical knowledge and content knowledge, right? So this, uh, this region here, this region here, right? So that is the best place. So if uh, an instructor has a content knowledge, of course, uh, in general uh, every instructor uh, has content knowledge otherwise they cannot go to the class to teach right and uh, the instructor must also have a pedagogical knowledge right so uh, the content like content is specific pedagogy right it is very important so uh, pedagogical knowledge and content knowledge uh, without uh, proper fusion or without proper overlap uh, will not work right so uh, proper uh, relevant uh, pedagogical knowledge to teach a content to teach a content uh, uh, is 
is required is required right uh, to make the learning effective and so these are the two papers uh, published in 1986 and 1987 by uh, Lee Sulman. And these papers are uh, available online. Uh, for uh, I mean, they can be freely downloaded. So uh, 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 on this background, uh, Misra and Kohler, Misra and Kohler, uh, I believe uh, uh, Misra was originally, uh, both of them were at uh, Michigan State University. But now Misra is, I believe, uh, in uh, Arizona State University. Arizona State University. So they, uh, uh, on that background, they gave uh, in 2006. Actually, they started this idea even earlier than that, like maybe around 2000. But in 2006, they published the paper, Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge, a Framework for Teacher Knowledge. So uh, what it basically tells us that uh, tells us is so there are of course three domains here right represented by three circles uh, pedagogical knowledge uh, 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 as I explained in the previous slide content knowledge I explained in the previous slide but to make uh, the uh, learning process more effective the third component is also required that is ap application of right technology to deliver a content in a pedagogically sound way, right? So uh, this uh, uh, is uh, TPCK or uh, in general they are, that is called uh, TPAC, Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge. And by the way, uh, you see uh, in uh, these internal Venn diagrams, but there is a big circle with the dashed line outside. So uh, it depends on the context, right? It depends upon, uh, upon the context like so what we are delivering, what content knowledge we are delivering, right? So uh, we need to uh, apply, uh, find the technology uh, like uh, which is relevant uh, for that content. Okay, so that is the context. So uh, uh, what I'm now going to uh, do is that is a, a simple uh, introduction about uh, pedagogy. And now, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, tell about uh, the pedagogy course which I have developed for student educators. So the goals are basically, after the completion of this course, that is the art of physics teaching, the pedagogy, physics pedagogy course, student educators, that is teaching assistants and peer learning assistants. That's what we call at WPI uh, in my university. Elsewhere, they are simply called learning assistants uh, so uh, they will be able to engage the students in learning more effectively and inclusively okay so uh, uh, what are the uh, remaining parts of the uh, talk the major components uh, i mean uh, what, what are the major components of the course the major components are videos with uh, pedagogy and content elements pedagogy and uh, pedagogy and content elements and literature on misconceptions, discussions on students' responses to homework and exam questions. So basically, uh, I, uh, in my pedagogy course, uh, uh, I have included these three components. Uh, sometimes we go beyond, but uh, in general, we uh, mostly uh, train our students, uh, the teaching assistants and peer learning assistants, on these three areas. Okay. So... I started as uh, it as a pilot course uh, in 2018. Uh, every fall semester, about 25 to 30 teaching assistants and peer learning assistants take this co these classes. So what we do, uh, what we have been doing since last five years uh, uh, is uh, the teaching assistants take this course uh, uh, as uh, uh, that comes uh, under their uh, uh, teaching uh, stipend package. So. Uh, uh, so they is their their responsibility their uh, role at WPI is uh, as a teaching assistant. So they will take this course, uh, the physics teaching assistant take this course. Uh, that is one hour per week. Uh, on the other hand, peer learning assistants they are paid as the PLA hour, right? So uh, what whatever learning assistant uh, salary they earn per hour, so they will be paid for 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 uh, for taking this course, right? So
So that's what uh, we have been doing until this point of time. But in future, uh, for, from coming fall, uh, I am uh, we are planning to convert this as a credit hour course, either zero credit hour or one credit hour, depending upon who is taking the course. Like for graduate students, this is uh, zero credit hour because in general graduate credit graduate students uh, are paid their tuition is paid by the graduate school and so there is a certain amount of credit hours so that is already uh, uh, satisfied from their courses and so they take this as a zero credit hour but the uh, learning assistance will take as one credit hour okay so here is a, a one uh, uh, one component of the pedagogy course, and this is a, a Periscope uh, video, uh, which was uh, shot at, uh, I believe, University uh, University of Maryland. So uh, I will show later uh, this website, which I have seen, shown in the bottom, uh, Periscope lessons. So there are uh, more than 50 lessons, video lessons in there. Which are which were filmed at different universities, University of Maryland, University of Colorado Boulder, uh, University of Washington, uh, Texas State University, uh, and uh, Florida International University. So uh, these uh, videos uh, uh, were uh, 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 these videos have been uh, used uh, 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 in different places wherever uh, pedagogy uh, classes, pedagogy courses are taught. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am playing this short video, which is about two minutes long. So hopefully it can be, uh, the audio is good. Uh, so let me play. Um, so, so we're talking about the response time here. Oh, okay, so we're talking about tension, right? And how tension was affected. Well, what about this diagram right here? Um, if, if last semester I was trying to get you to analyze the motion of object two, what would you have done? Yes, exactly. And what would be on there? Well, they're saying no gravity. So just tension. 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 How many horses are in it? Two. 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 Yeah, there's one on it as well. Is that okay? All we have is tension forces on this guy. If we're not, not gravity. Not gravity. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. So, I agree with this. That there's just two. So, what? Well, or explain to me why two is gonna. What, what direction two is gonna move in my head? This way, because this is like this kind of. So it's like. Those are equal, and then you have like an up component and that component. Well, see, these two cancel, and then so then you have an up component left, so it's always gone. What do you guys think? Sorry, I'm doing something. I'm doing something. I, I asked her to explain to me first. Um, what? Well, if these two cancel, then it wants to move upwards. Yeah. If the horizontal phase is cancel. Equilibrium because I feel like the tension forces were equal enough. Here, now there's another force pulling it this way. I feel like it's disturbing its equilibrium. Which, which way is it pulling? Left. Left? So, what would you tell me about that? Well, I hear clearly the separations are the same one in the wall, one, two, two, and three. What about this one? If I'm just considering horizontal separation. Um, they have the same distance. The horizontal separation is the same. Yes, because. Um, well, oh. I don't know if they oh. made it explicit well, here. Well, maybe because yeah. there's now not just two words on hold, there's also the additional component in another direction, so that's like total adds up to more of a force in this direction that's like pulls it in that direction. In this direction. What do you guys think? Do you have some explanation or some? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Are you guys, do you guys know what we're talking about here? I know you can't really see this stuff. Like components is a diagonal and uh, X and Y components. But here, uh, now that it's pulling it upwards, you still have this horizontal component, which is equivalent to this component, but now there's this additional um, uh, vertical component, which adds to this leftward component and thus adds to a greater potential force than this one to the right. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this video has uh, a transcript uh, 
actually uh, i should have shown that like i'll show later uh, and students are uh, the participants are given that transcript uh, they uh, and there are there, there there are questions couple of questions there they are allowed to think about that and this video is played uh, everyone will watch video together and then uh, there are uh, some discussion prompts so uh, uh, students will participate in discussion so this video goes up for, for about like uh, actually it is planned for uh, for a full class but uh, what i have uh, i have been doing is i play the video and then we discuss uh, there are discussion prompts there i'll show you afterwards and those uh, prompts are uh, stu uh, students the participants uh, sorry, the participants uh, 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 discuss on those prompts uh, and uh, and uh, uh, the recipe is then they will watch the video one more time uh, whether uh, the objective uh, is understood or not so for this particular video uh, uh, the content is newton's laws uh, of motion uh, and uh, particularly the free body diagram and first law uh, of motion and first law and second law of motion and uh, 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 the pedagogy is questioning strategies so as we saw uh, there were students discussing on some question and uh, the uh, learning assistant came and then uh, the learning assistant did not give the answer right away so what the learning assistant did is guided the students towards the answer uh, asking uh, uh, some uh, supplementary questions like so some questions which guided them towards the uh, towards the uh, answer to that question okay so uh, that is a component of the uh, pedagogy course uh, in uh, uh, in my class classes and the next is the misconceptions what is that so misconceptions uh, uh, as uh, solman writes pedagogical content knowledge also includes an understanding of what makes the learning of specific topics easy or difficult the conceptions and preconceptions that students of different ages and backgrounds bring with them to the learning of those most frequently taught topics and lessons if these pre if those preconceptions are misconceptions which they so often are teachers need knowledge of the strategies most likely to be fruitful in reorganizing the understanding of learners because those learners are unlikely to appear uh, before them as blank slates so uh, this has a lot of contents in here lot lot of important points here for example uh, if a learner uh, is like uh, learning some concept for the first time they will learn better than someone who has already learned something in a wrong way right so that is someone has brought uh, a misconception in their mind uh, one example i would like to give right now is uh, acceleration when an object is thrown vertically upward right what is the what is the velocity at the maximum height uh, i what i have seen that students do that correctly the velocity is zero and what is the acceleration at the maximum height and the student again say that is zero right probably they they learn that way which is completely wrong right of course the acceleration at the maximum height is dot zero right so that is a kind of misconception so here are some examples there are two examples i have picked up here to show uh, uh, in this presentation one is this okay uh, i believe i let me rob this thing here okay good okay so uh, uh one is this uh, in, uh, i uh, 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 the reference is at the bottom here uh, from uh, i i got this from dr uh, alexandru maris 
who is the professor of physics education uh, research uh, at University of Cincinnati. So the graph below shows the velocity as a function of time for a car of mass 1.5 times 10 to the power 3 kilogram. What was its acceleration at 9 seconds? 90 seconds, right? So there are the, these different choices, right? So uh, uh, when uh, this question was asked uh, uh, after the uh, after the course was taught, right? So how did the students do? I am now showing the result. Okay. Hopefully it works. Right. So the change in uh, velocity is 20 meter per second in this interval of 60 seconds. Right. So the correct answer is uh, this, right. But a student, uh, uh, if uh, every student chooses B, uh, that is that would be fantastic. But uh, students have different thoughts. Students have different conceptions, right? So uh, some people choose, for example, A, say, saying that uh, like the reasoning uh, is in the picture itself, uh, 20 seconds, right? So, uh, sorry, 90 seconds, and 90 seconds, they go vertically up, and then corresponding velocity is 20. So they don't see the change in velocity, but they simply divide velocity by time, uh, at that instant, which is of course incorrect, right? So people choose that way. Some people also choose that uh, this, right? So uh, this is uh, these are two boxes here. These are two boxes here. They do not bother reading these numbers. They don't bother reading these numbers. But two divided by two is one. So acceleration is one meter per second square, right? That's what some of those students think, right? That they, they thought that way. And some of them just uh, uh, read off the graph, right? In 90 seconds, the velocity is 20 meter per second. Instead of acceleration, I mean, they read that number and they wrote, right? They wrote that number as acceleration. And some students even did not bother of doing any kind of calculation. What they thought is, was uh, acceleration is always 9.8 meter per second square. That is always acceleration due to gravity. So, See, uh, in a classroom uh, uh, like of 100 students, right? So uh, this question was given after that course was taught and uh, there uh, were different percentages uh, of that. Like, so for example, 26% of the students gave the correct answer, right? So 46% of the students chose answer A, okay? By the way, this material has been published in physics education research journal right so uh, uh, we, we can find in there and 16 percent of the students chose e and six percent of the students chose c and six percent of the students chose d right so uh, this is what i mean by misconception so let's go to uh, uh, yeah, let's go to the next co concept, uh, next uh, component of the course. Uh, next com uh, the next component uh, in my course, what I do is uh, I uh, take a screenshot of the uh, student's exams. I remove the names and take the screenshot and uh, uh, we'll discuss uh, that in the class. Right, so for example, here is one very popular question. This question is uh, in the textbook, uh, written by Young and Friedman University Physics, originally written by Zimanski, right? Later, Young and Friedman uh, updated that. So uh, this question is there. I asked this question in the exam, two objects, each of which W uh, hang vertically by a spring scale as shown in the figure. The pulleys and the springs attached to the objects have negligible weight, and there is no appreciable friction in the pulleys. What is the reading in the scale? Right, so student uh, uh, did this question this way. This was a multiple choice question, of course, and uh, so they uh, they chose. Uh, they, uh, I mean, the student uh, uh, constructed this kind of diagram, right? So T1 tends on there, T2 tends on there, and T1 is equal to weight, right? Uh, uh, the student did not draw free body diagram of this object, but thought that 
uh, this tension is nothing but the weight of this object. And the same way, uh, he thought, uh, the student also thought tension in that way, and then uh, for some reason, uh, there is no description why, but uh, from this, uh, for some reason, uh, the student thought that uh, I should add, right? So, student added T1 plus T2, so 2W, and uh, chose the correct answer. Chose the answer, not correct answer, chose the answer as A, right? So, then I pose this question to the student. Now, what I do next is, uh, what I do next is, actually, I will pull out that file uh, in a minute, uh, in a minute, and then we'll talk uh, for a few minutes on this uh, problem. But before that, uh, what was the impact of the pedagogy course? I have few uh, qualitative uh, uh, feedback, right? So uh, verbal. So what do the participants say? Although I scored an A grade in the course, I learned the material better and in depth after I worked as a peer learning assistant and took the pedagogy course. That was the uh, feedback from a student. And another student says, I like the discussion on why incorrect answers are chosen by students. That is basically uh, on misconceptions. The classes help me be more open to understanding different uh, thought processes. And another student says that the classes were useful to understanding better how students think differently and what techniques to use to teach. Another student says, this course was directly applicable to my job as a peer learning assistant. I found that I went to lab properly equipped to answer my students' questions. Other students say that the techniques for following a student's train of thought and figuring out misconceptions were useful for grading exams and helping students during office hours. And I enjoyed different perspectives on teaching. And the, the last comment I have picked up here is, I learned from the course that looking not just uh, at how many people got a question right, but also how many got the answer, whether it was correct or incorrect, right? So uh, that was uh, uh, the short presentation. But before I uh, uh, end the session, I would like to uh, go over that discussion question uh, in here. Okay, so let's go to this discussion question. That is the same question which I showed you there now let's quickly talk about this like how i uh, how i uh, have designed the discussion so that is the same question i showed you in a few minutes back but uh, i mean uh, the students uh, uh, the peer learning assistant or teaching assistants have already taken this course uh, while they were in the first year for example uh, physics one mechanics course Right, so they basically uh, more or less already know the content knowledge, and they are also trained by the uh, course instructor every, uh, I mean, one hour every week, right? So uh, they know the content knowledge, but uh, I uh, throw these questions, right? So these are the discussion prompts. For example, why do you think the student chose the answer shown, right? So that is more or less uh, explained, uh, explained by this. Uh, by this picture, right? Uh, what is the correct answer to this question? Right, so uh, I ask them uh, to choose the right answer, right? What do they think? That, that means what do the students in that class, in my class think? And why do you think uh, a student can choose other options? Like, so uh, what uh, this question is a kind of, uh, the question uh, thrown to, uh, to make them think, what does that mean? So, for example, why does a student think it is more than 2W, less than W? It is more than W, but not quite twice as much. Right? So, uh, like, because uh, we uh, saw, uh, like, so we saw these different options chosen by number of students in exam. Right? So, why do they think that way? Right? So, the main goal for these discussions is uh, uh, prompt number E. What strategy do you follow to guide this student toward the correct answer? Right. So uh, we discuss on that. And then, uh, so uh, when we uh, end the uh, session, like so, uh, the participants uh, feel a kind of pretty happy, like so, because uh, they were not taught that way before. 
right? So uh, this is the discussion, this kind of discussion questions. So I will not be playing these videos now. Uh, I will play these videos afterwards after we stop the recording because uh, when I play YouTube videos, like uh, when I upload this uh, recording, uh, it says that uh, it kind of shows kind of conflict. So I'm not doing that now, right? So uh, I, before I uh, uh, stop these, uh, 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 I will I would like to show you one more thing. So here, uh, if any of you are uh, planning uh, to develop a pedagogy course uh, in your institution, at your institution, so this is a very very uh, nice resource, and it is free for all educators, right? Periscope video lessons. So uh, if you click on, uh, once you log in, uh, create, uh, uh, do sign up first, and then once you log in, uh, click on all lessons. So there are different, uh, uh, different uh, 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 short videos on different topic. And uh, I just played one video, but uh, when you click on uh, one of them, for example, so there are like pedagogy content, uh, uh, I think this is not, uh, I did not use this. Let me show you uh, the videos which I selected. Uh, for example, yeah, so for example, this one, right? So uh, the title of uh, this video is Hello. Like, so this video has instructor in interactions, uh, pedagogy content. I wanted to actually uh, show you a video which has all uh, components in there, like let me go down. Uh, hopefully, uh, how can I move students towards solution? Uh, interesting. Uh, uh, so there are multiple videos. Uh, I want to. Well, let me uh, let me do this. Like so, uh, I believe this was shot at uh, Florida uh, International University. So, oh yeah. So I wanted to find this. So uh, in the, the in these uh, 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 videos uh, are accompanied. Uh, they come with student handout. So when you click student handout, so uh, you will uh, see the discussion prompts. Uh, hopefully, it will open. Uh, I don't know where did it go. Mm. I think I need to go to downloads. I believe. Mm. Oh, you know what? It uh, it opened everything. Like so. So yeah. So that video uh, has so when you uh, like there is a recipe. So for about five minutes, student they read this. And then, uh, and then uh, watch video, and uh, uh, there are discussion prompts here. But while watching video, students are also made available this transcript, right? So it is kind of easy to follow, easy to follow, right? Uh, and there are also there are also lesson guide and general facilitators guide, and of course there is the video. So each uh, uh, each video, uh, each video is also has these uh, components here, right? So this is a very good resource uh, developed by Rachel Sir and her team, I believe at University of uh, Washington, University of Washington. But uh, uh, but recently there are more and more videos uh, uh, like uh, uploaded here from other universities also, okay? So this is one a good resource for uh, pedagogy course. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, now uh, before uh, I uh, like one final thing I would like to show is uh, so uh, as I sh uh, mentioned, so I have uh, uh, submitted I and one of my colleague uh, uh, who uh, recently started at WPI. So uh, I have submitted this uh, course proposal and it is under review. Uh, in the physics department at WPI, so uh, uh, so uh, basically those are the course uh, uh, components, 
uh, I have integrated here, right? So uh, I would like to uh, um, get uh, your feedback uh, uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, to improve, uh, uh, if any, uh, the uh, content in this, okay? So with that, what I would like to do is, I would like to stop share, and there are three short videos I will play afterwards when uh, recording is stopped. So let me stop sharing. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank you so much for your uh, uh, participation, right? So I would also like to request uh, Navin sir uh, to uh, stop recording, uh, and thank you so much.